Hey everybody, it's time for another episode of Mid Card Mana, and hopefully I will get more than just me. We ain't getting any sound from you, Sam Kilo, the wrestling connoisseur, but there you are. It says you did not connect to audio, so... Maybe. Oh, now I yeah. hear you. All right. There's things like the old Starship Enterprise. You got to flip all these switches to get it going. <laughs> like, come on. How's it going? I'm all right. What about you, buddy? Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. I don't know. Yeah. Stuff's going on. Stuff's going on. I'm eating side man. That's, that's where I'm at. I'm at that side that's, there already. That's a that's a good cold Hawaiian morning breakfast. You know? All right. So so what did you, you want to talk about? Because we missed last week. Uh, this week there's still there's some other stuff going on. I don't know if you want to backtrack from what there was last week to what there is now. Uh, big announcement from New Japan, though. They are resuming shows on the 15th, which is next week, Monday. Which our family is excited about. Yeah, I am too. Got my, got my Kansas shirt. All right. Um, <clears throat> finally, yeah. Well, you get some good wrestling. Yeah. I'm excited um, about that. Because uh, you know how much I miss all my New Japan boys. Yeah, I missed them a lot. I didn't catch anything last night, but I, I think I'm fairly caught up. I just didn't catch I, didn't, I didn't catch anything last night or Raw. I missed uh, NXT Takeover in your house. Wow, we're we're <clears> throat> watching throat> it. We're watching it tonight. Uh, I know what happens because okay. it's impossible to to not know. Yeah. Especially when uh, all my friends will text me and be like, oh, I'm so happy so-and-so won. I'm like, I didn't watch it, bro. Thanks. Thanks right. for that. I'll say at least my uh, my friends will kind of they'll ask first, hey, did you see? I'm like, no, I didn't. Okay. Let me know when you do. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but I mean, yeah, you know the results, so... Uh, I, I wasn't, it was okay, you know, takeover was okay. It, it wasn't, um, nothing made me leap out of my chair or anything. Uh, it's, it's strange to say, I think the biggest moment for me uh, watching takeover was uh, Johnny Gargano having to, to hit Keith Lee like 10 times and then Keith Lee only hitting him once. I'm like, oh my god! Finally, Keith Lee is working. <laughs> uh, um, not to disparage Keith Lee at all. I love Keith Lee. Uh, it's just that since he's been in NXT, they've, they've really done a lot of the indie stuff, and he's worked like he's Juventud Guerrero instead of uh, you know a big man. Yeah. Uh, you have this this dude who who's humongous, though. Granted, he is super athletic, but I would rather that be toned back. And, you know, if you're going to feed us that he's the Hulk, don't show me he's Spider-Man. And yeah. uh, I think they did a pretty good job with that in this match, finally. Uh, you know, they really played think, that up. I think they finally gave him an opponent where it, he, he was able to be the big man. Because so yeah. many of his matches in NXT specifically have been against other bigger guys. Yeah, and it's... it's like... Uh, uh, because like, like his match with Dajakovic, you know, it's I, I hate those matches because they're like, you know, it's it's a cruiserweight match, and you get two big dudes out there that shouldn't be having this match. I get it, you're athletic, but uh, you know, Kevin Nash's knees are rolling over in their grave watching <laughs> this match. Uh, it's just, it's like, wow, come on. I, I, I expect something better 
than than that, you know, especially when the rest of the guys on the show are smaller and lighter. Yeah. It's like they can do this match. But uh so anyway, yeah, I thought that was a pretty decent match. You know, I th- I think it I'm not sure if it opened the show, but it was pretty Yeah, high I up, mean it, it's hard to Yeah. I mean it's hard yeah. to not have a good match with those two talents. And especially because both of those guys are able to work with and against styles that are very, very different from what they usually go with. Right. Um, gosh, I'm trying to think what other matches they actually had. Uh, some of them, you know, I haven't kept up with the NXT tremendously. So I was surprised we saw Damian Priest versus Finn Balor. Uh, yeah, it's that was an interesting matchup, mostly because I felt like that feud really was rushed and came out of nowhere. Yeah, I mean, I, I had no idea about this this feud. Uh, so you go into it, I was just like, I are love these Damian guys Priest, both faces? I love Finn Balor, but because um, last I saw, I thought I thought Martinez was going face. I don't know if he is or not. I think they I think they were both heels, actually. I know, see it's so weird because Balor he was a heel and then they're like, oh, Balor's gonna face um uh 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 was his face for the NXT UK title. And I'm like, what? Why? And then they they brought him back to NXT and it seemed like they were trying to turn him face without ever doing anything. Um so I was like, I don't, I don't get it. Are these guys face? Are they heal? What's, what's going on? And then, honestly, you can't tell by their work either. So I really didn't care much for the match. Um, and then there's this one spot that looked horrible, the, the razor's edge to the apron, uh, which was I heard like about a, that. an ass buster than anything. <laughs> uh, Balor was actually holding his, his butt for like a good, good 10 seconds. Uh, I don't know. It it didn't work for me. I mean, besides that, they seemed like it was okay, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I I like as far as character and storyline ish. I liked their two separate paths that they were going on before. I liked mm. uh, as as much as I sort of scoffed and rolled my eyes at it before the whole Archer of Infamy thing instead of getting, yeah, instead of Punishment Martinez being Punishment Martinez. Oh man, we got we got a third. We got Trucker Kyle. (laughs) But I liked, so I liked Punishment Martinez's new thing of being the Archer of Infamy. I liked that he entered with a bunch of chicks. I was like, Ho- homie's pimping because he can. Um, <laughs> and I, because I've always liked Punishment Martinez. He's a he's a good looking dude. Um, and then I Not like flavor, Balor's. But... <laughs> I like I like Balor's. Uh, you know, trying to be be more like um, Prince Devitt again. Aesthetically, you think what? I think aesthetically, this match helped um, Martinez. Uh, he's a small dude. I mean, he's tall, but he is so scrawny, um, you know, compared to so many. So, I mean, in there against yeah. Ballard, Ballard has like, what, 1% fat on his body, if that. Um, so. Just shredded. He, yeah. You know, for such a sm- small guy, Ballard is, he's shredded. So, so. You know, in their, uh, they looked well together. I guess. Yeah. Trying to, you know, a lot of times you put put Martinez in there against these other guys, and he just looks. Yeah, he's tall, but he looks like he's malnourished almost. Uh, <laughs> wow. You know, especially putting him in there against Keith Lee. You know, Keith Lee is a big dude, and you have Martinez. He looks like Conan O'Brien in the ring with him. Um, <laughs> so I mean, and that's that's a lot of guys down there in NXT now. Um, so, you know, it's it, from what we're used to visually. Um, yeah. If you have a guy that's six six, six seven, six eight, 
and they they come out and you know they already blow their height to weights up anyway but they're like he's six foot eight and he's 230 pounds it's like yeah bobby eaton was 230 pounds <laughs> and he was like um, so I don't know, just from an old school fan standpoint uh i can't imagine some of these guys in the ring in the you know in the 90s or the 80s uh because some of these guys, you know, you, you would just be kind of like mind blown, I guess. Look like Warlord versus a cheeseburger. Uh, yeah. Plus, we have to use cheeseburger you know. because you know I love cheeseburger. I know. Have to use it. Yeah. So does Trucker Kyle. He gets uh, McDoubles. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, you know. We not small people, so yeah. No, I, yeah. So I I have to yeah I have to agree I have to agree with you. I had never thought of it that way, but at looking back, I'm like yeah yeah that's kind of true. Like when you when you had uh, the triple threat, which was Keith Lee, Dijakovic, and Damian Priest. There was a kind of odd man out. I love him. I do. I truthfully, Punishment Martinez. I I liked the most out of the three before mm-hmm. they went to NXT. Possibly the biggest name of the three, actually. I think so. You know, I mean, he was with and the one that, and he didn't. He didn't get to keep his name. <laughs> Well, neither did Dijakovic, really. His name kind of changed. Donovan Dijak. Dominic right. Dijakovic. That's so, that's like the same A thing. It's, it's just like, it's. Uh, it's like how Kaidi Sane didn't get to keep Kaidi Hojo, and Yoshirai got to keep her name. Right. Apparently, when they uh, trademarked Io's name, they put L-O instead of I-O. That's a real thing. So, so they trademarked Lo Shirai. Maybe, maybe because they couldn't get Io Shirai? I think they just put, like, a line, you know, for the I, and they mistook it for a lowercase L, maybe. I have no idea. Anyway, that's, yeah, that's hilarious, though. Yeah, I'm trying to think what other matches were on the show besides the main oh. event. Which okay, which match do you consider to be the main event? The women's, right? The title match. The last, always the last, the, the last but, match. Um, all right, let's let's talk about Adam Cole here and Velveteen Dream, baby. You know, we talked about like size wise since I brought yeah. it up with, with Martinez. Adam Cole fits that as well. He always seems like the he seems like the odd man out in WWE period. I mean, even when he was in there with he's Rollins he's, and Daniel Bryan. Like the odd man out also in in Undisputed Era. Yeah. And and these guys aren't huge themselves, but you know, they've just beefed up over time, Adam Cole still has that high school body. He looks like he should be in my shop class. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I like Adam Cole. I got though. about what Trucker Kyle. I I think we lost. I think we lost the good sister. The host is gone. 
unmute yourself, buddy. So quiet. There we go. Let's let's see if we can record. It's still recording. Cool. Still recording. I was trying to talk to Trucker Kyle, but he just smiled at me, and I think I he's got it turned down. You old fucktard. <laughs> can't hardly hear him. I think I heard some explicitives. Ex yeah, maybe. Um, All right, yeah. Trucker Kyle. Good to see you again, my dude. Finally. You know, after what? Three weeks? I I know Sam. Sam bitched out last week, man. Is why. I did. It was. Excuse. It's fine. You have kids. Yeah, I got kids, yo. But, yeah. Um. Yeah, the match itself was. It was. It was what it was. They so try to do that cinematic thing again. I don't know if it really worked for this match. I heard I heard that a lot of my friends that really loved the cinematic stuff for like Undertaker versus Styles and Money in the Bank did not like this one. Or maybe it wasn't a dislike of this one, but was just disappointment compared to Could have there was enough those other matches. It, it, it was just different. You know, those other ones were so story-driven and movie-like. Um, even even to uh, the Money in the Bank. Uh, this one was about a match. So it was kind of hard. Like, when you're watching it sometimes, you're just like, okay, it feels like I'm watching a movie instead of watching a wrestling match. Um, and that can be okay if that's the style they want to go with. But I, I feel like they got to stick with one or the other, honestly. Um, and I mean, if the whole show was like this, I would be okay with that. But it, it's just you, you're you watching a wrestling pay-per-view, and then in the middle of it, you throw this in, and it's kind of like, uh, what am I watching here? Mm -hmm. uh, like I haven't kept up with NXT very much the last few weeks. So, so like a, a, a Drexel Loomis, or I, I don't know what his name is, Dexter Loomis. Dexter Loomis. Sam Shaw from Impact. Yeah. Face or heel? Because I was just under the impression he was healed just by the gimmick alone and what I've seen him mean before. Is he heel? 100% tweener. Oh, my God. Fuck you, Kyle. I think he... Oh, wait. You know what? Kyle that might, be, right. why you, that might right. be why you can't hear, hear, hear me. There we go. That's... <laughs> That's the I problem. didn't have my microphone down. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> if, if, if I'm just tuning in vaguely and I don't know what these guys are, how am I supposed to have some sort of reaction to them? So I'm watching it and I'm like, this guy comes in and he kidnaps Bobby Fish and Roderick Strong, which in and of itself is like, okay, what? Uh, he's, he, Kyle's right, though. How he's been played has been very tweener. He, it's awful. I mean, he might be it. he might be moving closer to face, like a creepy face. That's but, what I assume. I'm just like, well, you know, I haven't I haven't seen before, what they've done with like, it. It seems it seemed like he was kind of moving towards the face, but then he goes back heel. Like it's I don't know. It, it, I absolutely hate it. Yeah. I hate how they've done Charlotte. You know, I, I hate that when they have somebody and it's like, you know what, let's let's bring them in between here and there's no payoff. There's absolutely no payoff to have somebody that's not face and not heel uh, in the long run, you know. Why should I care about this guy just because, okay, he kidnapped Roderick Strong? Should I care? If Roderick Strong is a heel, should I really care if he's kidnapped by another heel or another – not heal but not face okay uh, so this this brings me back i'm glad you put it this way because this brings me back to a long-standing argument 
that you and I have both had over <laughs> over the alignment of Adam Cole and Undisputed Era. Now you said because he gets pops, he's a face. I he say they're cool. they're yeah. cool heels. No such thing. <laughs> See, I don't and, believe in like cool heels. And when it's, you know, you know that I'm not the biggest fan of Adam Cole, uh, but when you look at how they kind of present themselves and how popular they remain, even mm. though they're very clearly the heels in pretty much every feud they go into, right. that's that's what they are. That's what they are. Because, I mean, we, we go back to, like, the argument. We go back to, like, the DX thing. When the DX were anti-heroes, when they were faces, and they were cool, and then when they turned heel, and they still did these dickish but funny things, and but they're heel. And I think some fans just kind of, they, they missed that turn. And, and so your faces are, you know, they assume they're still heels. I don't think people missed that turn. Like, I think people understood, but they were so, I, I do, because I, they were they were so like anyway. Like, I knew, even yeah, I, when I, I was a kid, the that they, they, they were bad guys when they were bad guys, because they were jerks. But you right. still, you still go back to the things that you liked before, and you don't really let go of them. And I can me, talk a whole a nother episode term. of everything that, you know, people, when they find out that the things or the people or the, I don't know, stuff that they like is actually created by awful people or <clears throat> bad guys in real life, people are very unwilling to let go of the things they like anyway. True. And look but, for a lot of different excuses to hold on to or justify continuing to like them. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of times, especially from Attitude Era on in wrestling, that's kind of been the, how fans react. You love the person you love when they're a face. Sami Zayn, for instance, for me. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a bad guy it's now. A heel. But, but, but I, I still pop for him like he's a face. But, I love him as a heel. I, I loved him as a face. I love him as a heel. To me, it's my love for him is unaligned. I should boo for him, but but I I just look at him and I have stars in my eyes because I love Sami Zayn. So to me, that's my example of a heel that I still pop for like a face. Okay. I mean, like, to me, it's like if, if you're there in attendance, which you usually are. <laughs> And, like, you have even somebody that you really like come out, and they're clearly a heel like Sammy is right now. I would boo them even though I, I still love them, you know, because it's part of the yeah. show. No, um, I, I totally understand I, that. I just don't, like, I just go to the show and I forget that completely. Like, I'm so serious. I think of it afterwards. I, I was like, I should have probably, like, jeered him or something because that's what he wants. Yeah. But I just look at Sammy Zayn and I'm just like, oh, Sammy. You know, I go back to Chompa and it's okay. It's just the name. She used to do that in class to me all the time too. Like I'd walk I never home. called I'm you sure. Sammy. <laughs> I never called you Sammy. Anyway, I go back to Chompa oh, and man. his heel run. He was so good as a heel. Oh and God, he knew he, he just did old school things to get himself over as a heel. No, no music. That all the was fans that would love. Genius. I love no that. Music. Part of that is because of where Champa started. He started in in the greatest state of all. I mean, what can I say? <laughs> okay, we we won't let him down at this point, but uh, <laughs> no music, so the fans can't be like, "Oh, this is my favorite song." Uh, he didn't have catchphrases, so fans couldn't latch on to something he said. You know what I mean? They couldn't say, oh, yeah. this is a cool catchphrase. Anything cool, he deleted from that persona. Yeah. And, I mean, he still got over because everybody was like, holy shit, this guy is an amazing heel. You know, he got over because of his work rate. Yeah. And to me, that's, that's something that a lot of the heels in the business now, in general, really lack. You should not want to be cheered as a face. 
even if you're cool, you shouldn't want to be cheered. And I think that's part of the big problem with Undisputed Era. Adam Cole has all these cool things. He comes out, he's got the baby, he's got the boom. boom. <clears throat> he has all these qualities to make a great face. And he gets that response. So to me, it's like, okay, if you're trying to talk people into the arena, do you want your two big baby faces fighting? You know, is this a Hogan Warrior match? Or do you want, you know, to have have a heel? Do you want it to be Hogan Savage? You know, to me, you're going to sell more by Hogan Savage because if you have Hogan Warrior every week on every pay-per-view, it's going to get boring. And that's kind of where I'm at with Adam Cole. It's like he faces the top baby face at the moment, but he is comparable to the top baby face in reaction, in the likes, likability, the coolness factor. And then sometimes he exceeds the baby face. And it's like, you know, do I, do I want to see, you know, him face somebody that it's going to draw better? You know, who can we get that's going to be a bigger baby face than Adam Cole, even though he's heel? And there is just no, there's no Ricky Steamboat or Dusty Rhodes at the moment to come in there, you know, to really throw the comparison off. Even Velveteen Dream, as much as he's liked, he was another one that suffers from this. They just basically have were forced to turn him face. Um, and he, his character changed it all. I think the two people that could come, that could, could do it and be the, the face that could overcome the popularity of Adam Cole are two people that they recently turned to you. Finn Balor. Absolutely. And Johnny Gargano. I would say both of those would be great candidates, especially if Undisputed Era turned on Adam Cole. And you get like somebody to take over the group. You just by default turn Adam Cole face. The thing is now, it looks like... They teased it before with, with the sort of tension between him and Roddy. And I was yeah. like, are we finally going to get Adam Cole kicked out of Undisputed Era? Because this is something I've been waiting for <laughs> for a while out of I, Undisputed Era. I don't feel the same with the rest of the group. You know, They still feel healed to me. You yeah. Know? Um, yeah, even they though do. There's the coolness factor, you know? They, they still feel like they're doing things in a dickish manner. Adam Cole no, is not. Uh, yeah, and Kyle, Kyle O'Reilly's whole thing of like, you know, air guitaring the, the belt is, yeah. is, such a, is such a dork heel move. But everybody eats it up because the, the faction as a whole now is cool. Right, I mean, it's headed they've by They've got Adam the Cole. cool pose. They've got the Undisputed Era. They've got the matching armbands. Oh. You know, they they were all in gold. Uh -huh. they, like, there was a stable. They, they were a stable that had all the golds in NXT yeah. for a while, so. So now it's heading toward Killer Cross is going to challenge for the title. Um, so it's I'm like, stoked about it's that. a good opportunity because now we have heel versus heel. Yeah. So can you pull the trigger and turn Adam Cole face? Because he's going to come off as the big face. Yeah. This... He's also going to come off as the big underdog here, even yeah. with Undisputed Era, because of how they've been building Killer Cross. Or, you know, I mean, it could go any which way, but I feel like NXT is suffering because they don't have any clear alliances, you know, alignments. Um even Killer Cross, it's like fans love Killer Cross. You're really going to have to to do something major. And I don't feel like the, the match, I mean, guess the feud's over with Ciampa. I don't feel like that was enough to really nail Cross down as the evil monster heel. Yeah. You know, um, I don't know. I don't like the direction they're going with this, to be honest. Uh, I'm like clear cut faces and heels. If you're going to turn somebody, fine. You could have a prolonged turn, but you eventually have to turn them. Um, and and if everybody on the show is is a tweener, if everybody's turning and nobody ever turns, you're going to lose interest eventually. All right, I have a question for you, and a matter of opinion, of about okay. the main event. I have a few triple minutes. threat, triple threat, right? Main event for the NXT Women's Championship. 
yeah. champion going in, Charlotte Flair. Her two yeah. opponents, Rhea Ripley and Io Shirai. Rhea, the former champion. How do you feel? How do you feel alignment goes there? Because Io won. Right. But the celebration they had for her winning it's a mess, honestly. was was a very stardom face. Yes. And I think that was possibly, you know, a tribute to Hana in some strange way. I uh, that's that was what I thought too. I was like, it's interesting because it's it's more stardom like than we've seen ever in NXT <laughs> and because it's Eel and we know her, that's her background and all that especially with right. everything that's going on with Sardom and with the passing of Hanakimura I was like is this is this a is this a call out to that part of her background I feel like the, well the problem starts with Charlotte Charlotte Flair is being portrayed as bigger than alignment and she comes in as, as being he, very heelish, and then they'll throw her in a match against a heel. And it's like, do I care? I, I don't, honestly. I really don't. I had zero interest in this matchup, even. Um, you know, Rhea Ripley, she's the big baby face. Now and she is, yeah. She won the title. It was huge. I felt like it was a huge moment for her career. I felt I was like, okay, this is going to be our big, big baby face in the women's division. Right. How can they screw this up? Well, they can't. Uh, you know, you have Charlotte <laughs> as as a tweener, as Kyle likes to call it. Um, she is. As Kyle likes to call is. it. I she just is. call it as it is. <laughs> <laughs> she is though. And, Don't and hate that's kind the of player, hate the game, yeah, baby. She doesn't have an alignment, so how do, you get any... <laughs> how do you get any payoff with Charlotte? Honestly. She's so a she flare. comes in this match, she's the champion. I was way waiting for it. And Ric Flair, predominantly a heel all of his career, but when he was a baby face, he was clearly a baby face. You know, so... It is what it is. Um, you know, so for me, the match had a lot of problems. For one, you, you put EO over, you had the huge face celebration. EO was the only heel in the match, clearly going in. But she has such a fan following. To me, it's always been like for the last six months, a year. Why, why even have her as a heel? Everybody prefers her to cheer her over whoever her opponent is. Um, so, so that part was like, I, I felt was a mistake going in. Um, you could have had EO and Rhea as the faces and Charlotte as the heel. And I think you would have way more interest in the matchup. And honestly, Charlotte should be the heel since she's the, the big star. Um, well, she acts like the heel. She does. Like they no matter where she goes. She acts like a heel, and it's just because she's Charlotte Flair, you know? Yeah. And I feel I feel bad for her in the sense that at this point, it's hard to make her look like the bright, shiny, underdog baby face because of yeah. how she's been booked in the past, that now you don't really want to cheer for her. So you might as you well don't. make her a heel. Right. And, and, that's and a, yeah. have the she's reaction a, work that way. And I mean, Flair... When he was a baby face, he would be a little cocky, but then you, he would he would have this connection with the crowd still. Whereas when, you know, when he was a heel, um, you know, it was the Ric Flair that we always loved. The, you know, the, the you love to hate kind of character. Um, so I thought that was a mess going into this to begin with. I think the outcome having Eel pin Rhea is a mess. Now, I know they're you know, like Triple H said, hey, wait, it's going to pay off in the long run. I don't know what that means. Um, I hope it, because it, it felt it felt very much like you're sacrificing Rhea, who is yeah, it does. going to be after, the one in NXT week after week, unless you're planning on 
throwing her up on the main roster, which I I don't have a problem with, really. Right. But I mean, but she's only lost in the shuffle. Yeah. So, and, and just like Shayna, um, how do you screw that up, right? How do you screw that, that up? That broke my heart because I was so excited for for the Queen of Spades. So yeah, I'm just you know I, I see this and I'm just like I don't I don't care because you've screwed it up already for me, and and we all have this innate ability that we understand storytelling and and whatnot. So when something like this gets messed up, I'm just kind of like you blew it. You blew your big moment. And I know there's a lot of factors that go into it and and different things, but. To come out and say, okay, well, you know, it'll pay off in the long run. Kind of should have paid off at the end of the show. Um, you know, if, if that's your excuse, I, I have a lot of problems with the credibility of where NXT is going at the moment. And, you know, uh, I kind of relate it. If you look at NXT, Triple H NXT with Regal, um, and then it splits, you have the DX NXT yeah. with Michaels and Road Dog. Yeah. And you can kind of see that line straight down yeah. the middle where it went from really entertaining to eh, it's not doing so well. Oh, and, it, it's uh, it started leaning much more towards nostalgia, I feel. Yeah. Um, and how things were done I hate to say kind of more Attitude Era style with the cool heels and the hot chicks like with the dick damien priest for yeah. example coming out with hot chicks every time yeah. or even scarlet bordeaux being the hot evil manager um, you know, channeling channeling uh luna vachon ish mm -hmm. channeling uh sensational sherry kind of so you know i i like parts of it but if you turn me. the whole show into a nostalgia fest, like I think that, I mean, this was in NXT in your house. Right. <laughs> I wasn't surprised at that sort of nostalgia feel. I was a little confused by it because it didn't, to me, it felt weird with the direction NXT was going in before versus now and how uh -huh. they're really trying to like smash it together and it's like some pieces aren't fitting. And you're just sort of like, um... Yeah. I mean... Good shit. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, I hate to go back to this. It's like, with everything they do, it's kind of like, how can they screw this up? And uh, Shawn Michaels... We need so, to stop asking oh, that, because then they'll find a way. Every oh, time you say that, Sam, they always find a way, buddy. Have faith. Oh, come on. Be nice to Shawn Michaels. It's not his fault that his eyes weird. Okay, stop. It, it, it just... I don't, Sacrificed I don't his body for us, man. Come on. He sacrificed something. More so his marriage. <laughs> but, um, you know, him and Road Dog, who... I don't know. They might as well bring in X-Pac to help book. It might be even be better if they brought in X-Pac to book, honestly. Uh, it's been <laughs> so bad. Um, and I know there's a lot of NXT fanboys and fangirls out there. I really enjoyed NXT um, years ago. It's gotten to a point where I'm just kind of like, it's it's kind of turned into the main roster. You know, it's kind of just all over the place. And, uh, you know, besides our, our wrestlers that we love, um, you still, like, I always loved Arn Anderson, but I knew he was a bad guy. Mm -hmm. And so I was never like out there with an Arn Anderson flag, like, yay, when he's ripping out Sting's eyeball. <laughs> you know, you knew, <laughs> like, okay, Sting is our franchise. He's our big baby face. Um, but you hoped for a good story, you know, and you hoped both could get over and you hoped the best for both. But you, you know, it, you didn't want Arn Anderson out there cutting a big face promo if he's the heel in the, in the match. Yeah. And they didn't was the thing. Uh, I, I will say this kind of taking it back, sorry, from the end of the show with the women's match to the beginning mm -hmm. of the show with the other women's match. 
I feel like the directions they're going in with uh, people in the women's match. So it was a trip. It was a three man tag or three women tag. Uh, it was. I keep forgetting her name now. I think it's Raquel Gonzalez. It used yeah. to be Reina Gonzalez. Dakota Kai and Candice LeRae, who recently turned with Gargano, um, yep. versus Shotzi Blackheart, Mia Yim, and Tegan mm -hmm. Knox. Now, this now, is. You this say is, some of those names, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> it would take me all day. <laughs> but the, I feel like that, how they're doing that sort of heel face dynamic, is a lot clearer. It is. Where you have you have people, and I mean everyone loves Dakota Kai and you know Candice, but She's you have real. them, yeah, and you have them get geeked out. You know, you have Dakota mm -hmm. take a beating, and then yeah. have her muscle come in right and yeah. and help help get her out of it. Where but isn't she... it more? Isn't it more entertaining and uh, better storytelling? When you have, you know, even as popular as Dakota Kai is, you have her out there really selling it that she's a heel. Yeah. Her her entrance, and, I don't know if it was her entrance for this, but her entrance yeah, video yeah. for her match against Tegan Knox, I think at the last takeover, was just her, it was, I don't think there was any music, but it was just video of her just like slamming Tegan Knox's knee into the cage which I thought I thought was good. I it was kind of like on the cool side, but mm -hmm. I thought it worked kind of in the similar vein of Champa where you know you could tell she was completely unapologetic. She stuck to her guns. She didn't she didn't seem sympathetic at all. Mm -hmm. Or like and and she didn't make herself appear to be like oh sympathize with me. It was yeah. really just like, uh, yeah, I did a bad thing. What? <laughs> I'm going to do more bad things. Yeah, which I liked, you know? Yeah. And uh, I'm I'm not... So my fa my two favorites in this match are on the two opposite sides. Uh, Dakota Kai and Mia Yim. Mm -hmm. Mia Yim, I feel like right now she's kind of just been... Unfortunately, same with same with Candice, uh, although Candice is starting to step out now as being more than just the wife of Johnny Gargano. Mia Yim's mm -hmm. kind of been marginalized, I feel, as the girlfriend of Keith Lee. Yeah. I like that they're acknowledging that and using that those feuds as couples. Um, but I'm hoping to get a little bit more out of it because... Mm -hmm. Mia Yim is so likable when you look at her story and the things that she's gone through and especially her journey to get to NXT. So Again, which would be great if you had a, a, a heel champion like Charlotte Flair uh, who could really build up a baby face that everybody loves. Um, and the women's division is, is really strong in NXT. I think that's one of yeah, the they've they recovered very well, well actually. Uh, you know, you could strip out everybody but the women, and I think NXT would still do just as good. Um, so that's a huge statement for them. And the women's divisions everywhere are pretty strong. Um, you know, we don't talk a lot about like the the women of Impact, but oh god, that that division. roster is stacked. So I mean, that roster is stacked. Women's wrestling is doing very well. Um, but I think they have a lot of good things going for the women's division of NXT. If you just could fix the top tier, you know, that alignment level, uh, I think it would just make it that much better. You know, if we had clear-cut baby faces, clear-cut heels, um, like the lower part of the division, um, it, would just, it would just work better, you know. I mean, how... What do you do if you have, you know, a tweener against, you know, a big baby face? It just doesn't work to me. You know, if, I mean, yeah, now you got EO, but what is she going to be? Is she going to be heel or is she going to be face? And I don't know how they portrayed her last night. Um, oh. But I almost running over some possum or something out there. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, I do. I, mean, I do think they're trying to push her more as a face because they on Twitter. I didn't get to watch the episode, but on Twitter they posted this uh, video of. Oh man, everyone was excited to see Io Shirai win, and it was a bunch of fan reactions of yeah. her win. So it's like, oh, so face, right? It but I, I like so I like Io Shirai. I thought that <clears throat> with her level of talent, it mm-hmm. worked for her to be a heel. Kind of similar to how Candice LeRae is operating now, where she was like, "I've been better than all of you for years. You know, I ain't I ain't waiting around anymore. I tried to be nice." didn't work screw all y'all yeah so i liked that for for candace it, i liked it, it when he was kind of doing it when you have a heel that's like screw all y'all and then everybody's like yeah screw us it just doesn't <laughs> work you know what i'm saying i mean you can sit at home and be like oh she's really cool as a fate as a heel um but you still have to have those clear cut. yeah and i think with i candace, think that works now yeah, I think the lack of audience helped. And I think Johnny going out and, like, hyping her when there was no audience really helped to push her <laughs> in that direction. Because his whole thing of, like, you know, oh, she is the best wrestler in the world, my favorite wrestler. She is from Southern California, but currently residing in my heart, the best wrestler in the world, Candice LeRae. And I was just like, I love this. I thought it was great, you know? <laughs> I, I liked that he was able to figure out a way to get himself to be a heel by not changing very much about him. Similar to Sami Zayn, where, you yeah. know, he just amped up certain parts of his personality that everybody liked before, and now it's annoying. hmm Yeah. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what they end up doing. Uh, I, I feel... I feel like... We, a big step was missed here. Oh, <laughs> um, oh we get to see the back of Trucker Cow's truck again. I know. Got in there, buddy. No. Uh, <laughs> I, Nothing I, I, good. I feel, I feel like uh, they've they've definitely wasted an opportunity. Um, hopefully, everything gets back to you know. Basic wrestling dynamics, and um, you know, we we deserve to have clear cut heels and faces, honestly. And I know it might be like, oh, that's cool, you know, but then she can face everybody. But it just it doesn't work for me, you know. Like in the old days, you like the NWA champion would go over, and they could go back and forth between you know, the face and the heel. But they were always one or the other in the matchup and in the territory. Yeah. You know, if if Jerry Lawler was the face and Ric Flair came in, Flair was the heel. If Jerry Lawler was heel and Flair came in, and he would act like a baby face. Um, he wouldn't act like he was both or in between alignments. Um, so I think that's it's a it's a huge flop um, to do it that way. You know, if if you don't care about your, your main characters, then uh, I think you're not doing yourself any favor. So, yeah. yeah, I guess that's really the goal I got. <laughs> it is about seven, so that's around time where your family's going to wake uh, up. Yeah. And, you know, main, main roster... I don't know. The rumor is that they're going to strap Lashley. Poor McIntyre. Soon. Yeah, it's way too soon for, for McIntyre. They take it off now. Um, I, could, I could understand if they took it off at SummerSlam. Maybe too soon. I say Survivor Series you, and have him cheated, you know, build up MVP stable, cheat McIntyre out of the belt. Um, but really, like, have him over, like, he has to, like, take on this entire stable of men, um, cheat him out of it, and then McIntyre chase the belt, have McIntyre win the Rumble again, and go on to the next WrestleMania to win the belt again. Um, I could see something like that, 
but try it, try it again because he he un- unfortunately was not able or allowed to get that big audience pop or reaction. Yeah, which my heart my heart broke for him because <clears throat> I was like, man, what a great think, moment this would have been I if really there was think a crowd. That would work, though. You know, you have him lose it before Rumble, um, and then him enter the Rumble and and win. You know, the fans are going to go nuts when that happens. Um, and then have him win it back at, at WrestleMania. Um, I, think, I think that would work. It's just at this, at this moment they haven't, you know, they haven't done anything to really help themselves. I do think that they have made Lashley more credible. And yeah. It's taken them a while. It's taken them a good while. But um, that that Lana like thing was a misstep. I felt that Lana thing yeah. geeked him out, honestly. Yeah. Have you all seen the stuff about how they are? They plan to push a feud between him and Brock. Brock, 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 Brock. Yeah, I don't know how they'll do that. I mean, I guess if they strap. That would be my only concern if they strap him and then bring Brock Brock back in. Yeah. There's been Stranger Things. Um, Have there been more disappointing things, though? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) I mean, Sami Zayn has been champ a few times, so that has been, you know, probably the worst thing I've ever seen. So. Me change to my Sami Zayn hat real fast. Just bullshit. I was waiting for it. I'm like. What you get to do? Man, I, I guess that makes me Kevin Owens if if you're Sami Zayn. You're the face now, so. But I can always turn. That's Please. the other that's the other thing that I've heard rumors about, and I don't know if we talked about it, and I'll touch upon real fast before we go. Uh, okay. The Intercontinental Championship Tournament, from what I heard, a uh, rumor going around was that what they're going to do, back to nostalgia, they're going to eventually have a unification match. Because Sami Zayn never lost it, right? He was stripped. Right. right. So kind of similar to what they're doing in NXT with the Cruiserweight Championship, I hear they're going to go in the same direction with the Intercontinental Championship. Mm-hmm. So whoever wins it, on Sunday, which I think actually it's probably going to be a DQ or double double count out or something for yeah. the triple threat to be Sami Zayn, who never lost mm-hmm. the belt, versus the other two, Styles and, uh, and, and Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan. I, I feel like Bryan's going to win it. And I know I from the it was like, who, who's going to win it? It's going to be this guy. It's gonna be like, if, if you looked at the, the tournament and you thought they weren't going to do anything but Brian versus AJ, um, I, I don't... I, I had no hopes. F- I had hopes, okay? I, I was like, they're starting to push through Gulak, which I'm I hope, stoked but, about because I love the whole Drew Gulak yeah. as coach angle because it, it's you know, it literally what sense. he does. It makes more sense to use the title to have somebody get fluke wins or whatever and become champion and push a new guy up, uh, like they're doing Apollo Crews, um, then then put it on former world champions AJ Styles or Daniel Bryan. You know, it makes more sense for a Gulak or an Elias or somebody like that to win than a former world champion to win it. But, Although I think I think this is the one singles title on the main roster, besides of course the Universal Championship that Styles hasn't held. Hmm. So I think that's I no? to me that was why I was like maybe they might give it to Styles because that's the only one. Maybe maybe. But I mean, is that your criteria for choosing a champion? It's also a big issue to me. Um, I I don't know. I, I feel like Daniel Bryan will win it, um, and they can do a Daniel Bryan AJ feud until you know Sammy comes back from Canada. 
I'm counting the seconds, man. I'm counting the seconds. I miss Sami Zayn. I miss him a whole lot. <laughs> yeah. I love his Twitter stuff. Right? He's great. So awesome. He's 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 the great liberator all the way down. I love him. Let me let me just end on this note. So of course Allison, big time storyteller with her wrestling, have all the figures and everything. And, uh, we have a group. The faction just started, which is um, you'll love this. Uh, Mustafa Ali turned heel. He he was like the last one. It was him and Arya Davari and uh, Big E were the last three in the Royal Rumble. And Mustafa Ali uh, turns heel on Big E. And uh, of course, Big E wins the match. So he even submits it further. Mustafa Ali and Davari align together. Um, and then Jinder Mahal joins them. So we have this three people in this group now. Um, and then her last show, who joins the group? Um, they're looking to attack people backstage. Of course, uh, Mustafa Ali got attacked and or supposedly attacked. And um, they're blaming the New Day. And Sami Zayn comes along and he says he witnessed it. So that's our new stable is uh, Hill Mustafa Ali, Arya Davari, oh. Jinder Mahal, and now Sami Zayn. <laughs> You're just just going going all 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 over the the Asian continent, right in the Middle East, just yeah. all there. We got we're bringing in Syria now with Sammy, and we're just get it all together. Nice little package, put a bow on it. Yeah. Uh, it hurts me that Mustafa Ali is heel because that's like everything he he stands against in life. Um. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thought you would love that Mustafa Ali and Sami Zayn heels. I see. I've I've always wanted the Sami Zayn heel turn. You know that we talked about it. I've ne the one person I never want to turn heel because I know it would hurt him in his soul is Mustafa <laughs> Ali because he what he is? talked about how well he talked about how he he was a heel in the Indies. And he did the stereotypical uh, heel foreigner, mm -hmm. and then he he saw how much it like made little kids xenophobic and like yeah. hate people that looked like him. And then he was just like, "I'm sending smart. this wrong message." You have to be very smart about it now. You know that the sort of um, you can't be an old school foreign, foreign heel. heel. Yeah, it doesn't work anymore. I think Ginger Mahal is is a prime example of that because like, I, he won. I thought fate. I thought Ginger navigated it pretty well considering what he was given because he mm -hmm. called he called out people for being xenophobic and yeah. that I still think about that promo that he he gave to Nakamura where he said they'll never accept people like us as champion. They'll it never accept. So the they'll never accept someone someone Asian like us from the Asian continent as champion. We could be, we could hold all the belts we want. They will never they will never claim us as their champion. And it's crazy because it was true. It was true, and that I that's why I still think about it because I I thought that promo was incredible. Mm -hmm. Other people were just to... like, oh, you know, it sounds so racist. I'm like, no, you don't understand. <laughs> you know, I get, and especially in this day and age with the whole Black Lives Matter, and all of that, you really start to see a whole lot more mm -hmm. how people are really still stuck in the past in a lot of things and their different perceptions and stereotypes. Uh, and like like how you said, he was on the nose, 100%. Uh, and if you brought it, in gender now was, and you had MVP with a group and I mean, he's got Lashley, he's got the, the two white boys from NXT, I can't remember. Um, and then he's got, does he have somebody else? Or is that it right now? I think that's it. So, so let's say they, you turn Apollo Crews heel, have him join. Um, Shelton Benjamin would be a great person to throw into the group. Haven't uh, seen him in a while. Right? Um, I don't know who else you could throw in there. But say... Say you have this sable and they're attacking McIntyre and Jinder makes the save because we all know they're friends. 
We all yeah. knew he was at the wedding. He was one of the best men. You know, so you play that up. You play that reality bit up. You have Ginger save McIntyre. And then you play up on that line of, okay, well, you know, we can we trust this guy? You know, you have MVP going after Ginger to join the group. Then you kind of see this, you know, whether Ginger joins or not, depends on him becoming face or, you know, staying heel. Um, they can do this. They can turn gender face pretty easily, in my opinion. Yeah. And the guy I mean, wants honestly, to do it. he's he's a when you when you listen to him in like shoot interviews or when you look at his like stuff outside of WWE produced mm-hmm. television, he's a he's a likable guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think, and it, again, you go back to things like friends um, who can play off of each other is way more compelling than it, you know, you doing it with two associates or two strangers. Um, so I think it's, it's an opportunity. We'll see if they do it or not. I think they've kind of teased it, you know, in a small roundabout way. Um, we'll see. We'll see what they do. Uh, I, I think there's this thin line where the wrestling world sometimes does not acknowledge how much the fans know and uh, yeah. kind of dumbs everything down for them. And uh, for me, that's that's a little bit of why I hate so much of the tweener aspect they're trying to do. It's, it's, not, um, it's not playing up to how much the fans know. It's kind of like pandering almost uh, to a degree, uh, like a marketing ploy. But, yeah, I don't know. As far as Mustafa Ali, I think he would, he could make a great deal. Um, I do too. I think he can do whatever he wants because he's wonderful. But uh, I just know that he's, well, I just know that he's talked a lot about how uh, being a heel and seeing, seeing his, yeah, and seeing that stereotyping and how it affected little kids that were watching and Mm -hmm. gave them the wrong idea of how to, how to, spot a bad guy so to speak right. you know what I mean uh, but we um, see a lot of that in Hollywood now of ethnic actors who will turn down roles you know oh you want me to be uh, a terrorist huh could it be because I'm Middle Eastern <laughs> yeah you know can't I play a bad guy that's not you know the stereotypical Middle Eastern terrorist and yeah you know sometimes they will change those roles and whatnot because uh, there's a lot of talented actors out there, just like in the wrestling, um, and they can they can play a variety of roles. Uh, so, still hoping that Mustafa Ali is the uh, the hacker. That's what I'm hoping. Maybe. That's what I'm hoping. I miss him. I miss him a lot. I think of him all the time. It, it's gonna be it's gonna be Ali and Sammy. New heel I'm, faction. I'm, I, I I'm. I, you know, I liked your lollipop guild faction that you had, that you posted about. That was good. I, so I that, don't know if I support. Basically, who, that's the faces of the group. It's New Day with Joey Ryan. <laughs> and she's adamant about this. And I'm just like, you, you don't even, all you know about Joey Ryan is that he has lollipops. That's all she knows. <laughs> it's like... I've done the Joey Ryan gimmick of, with the lollipops, the lollipop gimmick. I yeah. went when I went to the one of the Ooze shows. I just had a bag of lollipops, and I would tell people, "Hey, you want a lollipop?" <laughs> That's great. Oh, and then you pull that. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, anyway, uh, I gotta go. <laughs> Have moment. fun. Did you did you finish your sign in? I did. I just gotta okay. drink the soup. But you know, that's a thing. Yeah, you gotta you gotta drink the dashi. Yeah. All right. Signing All right, out. Mid card mana signing off. Baby. Yes! <laughs> <laughs>